The Aaron Hernandez story. ABC's John Schriffen is in North Dartmouth, Massachusetts with the latest. Good morning, John. Well, George, good morning. This is now Aaron Hernandez's new reality, the medium security facility here behind me where he woke up in a jail cell this morning all by himself. This after he was arrested yesterday, charged with murder, released by the New England Patriots, and the judge denying him bail. Your Honor, the defendant is charged with the murder of Odin Lloyd. The 23-year-old former New England Patriot tight end stood handcuffed in a T-shirt as prosecutors laid out the case against him. Six charges in all, including the murder of his associate and semi-pro football player, Odin Lloyd. They observed numerous gunshot wounds to the body. In court, prosecutors outlined an alleged murder plot that started from an argument between the two men the previous Friday night at a Boston nightclub. Prosecutors say the plan went into motion the following Sunday night. Authorities found text messages allegedly from both Hernandez and Lloyd. Last Monday, shortly after 2 a.m., prosecutors say Hernandez and two friends bought gas and bubblicious gum at a gas station. At 2.32 a.m., prosecutors say Lloyd gets into the car with them. 3.07, the victim sends a text message to a family member saying, Did you see who I am with? Twelve minutes later, his sister responds by asking, Who? Shortly afterwards, Lloyd texts NFL, which prosecutors say means Hernandez. Moments later, multiple gunshots are heard by witnesses, according to prosecutors. Hernandez's own surveillance cameras then captured him arriving home. He is allegedly seen carrying a gun inside his house. Prosecutors claim Hernandez got rid of the next six to eight hours of video. Later that day, Hernandez returned to the rental car. Prosecutors say he offered the attendant a piece of blue bubblicious gum. The attendant begins a cleanup of the car and finds a shell casing under the driver's seat. And next to the shell casing is a piece of bubblicious blue gum. The former Patriots tight end has pled not guilty, and his lawyer insists his client is innocent. And this morning, we're just getting a look at this photo obtained by TMZ. Hernandez took of himself in 2009 in Florida, holding a Glock handgun. This defendant stands before the court without any record whatsoever. He has never been accused of a violent crime. So Hernandez seen here in this uh, 2011 thing, interview after the Super Bowl. What did you do after the Super Bowl? Nothing, <laughs> too. It was an emotional scene in court yesterday as the alleged details of the crime were read out loud. The victim's mother actually walked out just too much for her to handle. As for Hernandez, he is due back in court July the 24th. George. Okay, John, thanks. ABC's Chief Legal Affairs anchor Dan Abrams back with us again uh, right now. So you heard Hernandez's lawyer there. He says this is a circumstantial case, not a strong one. Well, it's a classic circumstantial case, and it may be a strong one. I mean, you're talking about surveillance tapes. You're talking about cell phone text messages. You're talking about physical evidence, shell casings, this piece of bubble gum found near a shell casing, which they believe they can link back uh, to Hernandez. You've got the destroyed surveillance tapes. You've got a cell phone that's handed it over in pieces. So it's true this is a circumstantial case, but prosecutors seem to have been able to piece together everything. They've gone minute by minute to piece together almost everything that they believe happened. What they're not saying is that Hernandez pulled the trigger, but that doesn't matter in a murder charge. That, that's right. Uh, they wouldn't need, they used the word orchestrated the execution. Now, they certainly were suggesting that he pulled the trigger, and, and, and it looks like that's what they're going to charge him with. They see him with the gun. They see him with a gun walking in afterwards, etc. But they wouldn't need that uh, to, to convict him of murder. What they don't also seem to have is a very powerful motive. The motive is odd here. I mean, the idea that something happens at a nightclub many days earlier, and then Hernandez decides to call in this guy who is apparently dating his girlfriend's sister, but that didn't seem to have been the issue. So we're going to need, and look, you, know, you don't need to prove motive, but in a case like this, jurors are going to want to know why. Why would he have done this? Why would he call a guy into a car, have a conversation with him, and then execute him at 3 in the morning? So I do think that motive, while not necessary, is going to be important for the prosecutors to establish. Okay, Dan. Thanks very much.